uh, welcome to your world with Prakash Kapila. So uh, from last time we met, uh, there have been a lot of changes that uh, have happened in past few weeks, uh, past two weeks. So I will be talking about things that uh, affect your world, my world, and uh, welcome to your world with Prakash Kapila. So the topic, the agenda of this um, um, show right now is uh, China, right? So wherever you are, whoever you are, China is affecting you. Whether you are in Africa, whether you're in Ma America, Europe, um, or Asia Pacific region, uh, definitely China is one that you have to be uh, cognizant of, um, you have to be aware of. Um, it, it affects your lifestyle, it affects your life, it affects your future. And uh, it, is, it has played an important role in past uh, 20 years in your uh, economic activity or in your economic lifestyle. But right now, uh, China is flexing its muscles, or so it seems. But uh, we will go into the details. So this uh, topic right now is the exclusively dealing with India and China conflict. And what are the options that India has against China? Uh, and how can India win uh, with China? So this is uh, totally biased towards India. And uh, this uh, takes into the, uh, the minute details that uh, many of the analysts may have not uh, uh, observed. Uh, to give a full disclosure, I am not a military guy. Um, I don't have any military experience, uh, nor am I a military analyst. So this is a pure uh, analysis done by a common person who has been doing analysis and who has been creating solutions for past 20 years in IT. So I'm basically an IT guy. Uh, but I do have an interest in um, helping India and I do have interest in India's uh, future and prosperity. So this uh, video is exclusively going into the details of how India can win the uh, standoff bit, uh, between itself and China. So before even you can go into, the uh, into how uh, we can win, First thing is China is not a small country. It's a very, very big country. It is very powerful country. It has a lot of uh, military acumen. Uh, it has a lot of war um, knowledge because China basically. So let, let's go into the details of uh, how China uh, has evolved over a period of time so that we can understand what is China? And then we can think about why China is doing what it is doing and how to overcome the pressure that is uh, put on uh, India. Right. So right now, what um, how the, over a period of time, China, China and India have been like neighbors um, for like 2000 years as a country. You know, even though India was like princely states. Um, uh, divided into multiple regions uh, every place was called as uh, bharata or jambu dwipa bharata bharata varshe bharata kande that's what they used to say they they will say so in china also it is like that there were warring factions uh, there were like three or four different uh, provincials that were constantly at war and out of that uh, provinces there was a kin Q U I N Kin Empire that uh, started progressing um, by occupying other territories and imposing their uh, language over other um, uh, provinces. Uh, provinces. So there was uh, what it uh, enabled was there is one language, um, Cantonese. I mean two languages. It, it evolved into just two languages from around 50 to 60 languages it came into two languages and those two languages are Cantonese and Mandarin and uh, right now the, uh, there is uh, Mandarin only mostly is uh, used uh, there is modern uh, version of Mandarin and there is a older version of Mandarin 
so to give you give a, a brief the whole provinces that were there were occupied by kin empire and slowly the occupation started and they created a big, huge empire called china slowly it start uh, it became into china so later on what happened was china again uh, disintegrated into uh, a, a small uh, country status that is the economically it was uh, very weak and uh, it was uh, having internal strife all over so uh japan invaded china and uh, it was able to uh, take care of um, a lot uh, it was able to take out lot of chinese provinces under its belt during 1945 1935 to 1945 time frame so in that time frame uh, most of the china was uh, with japan and uh, the second world war started and after the second world war japan had to secede the regions that were conquered uh, by itself so the china is not a monolith country it is a very big country it's a very huge country very culturally uh, diverse country but one thing is uh, china was always on war i mean it, it used to war with everybody uh, almost everybody it has war with japan it has war with taiwan it has war with tibet it has war with korea it has war with russia it has uh, a war with of course mongolia and uh, so it, it is in constant uh, flux of wars basically so they are very very uh, well versed in the war theory uh, they understand war much more than uh, it's a warring country basically they understand war a lot so uh they use those uh, warring principles in business as well and therefore they have become very big and very um scaled very highly so one on one comparison of military strengths of india and china you would see that china is like in all aspects china is uh, like uh, at least two or three times uh, more in uh, the tools the machines the people not the uh, tools machines and uh, the army and the police put together it will be uh, very huge it spends around 250 billion dollars in its uh, budget for defense whereas india spends on 60 billion so what is that going to describe uh, that is going to tell you the amount of money the um defense has to spend on its uh, upgradation or uh, buying new weapons and all those things so uh, having said that china's weaponry uh, they they have uh, published that their weaponry is very great but uh, the um uh, but the scientists uh, and people who are well versed with uh, these weaponries say that uh, they are not they, they are not super standard they are sub standard on the other hand india has lesser weapons but indian uh, uh, engineers are uh, indian, indian engineers and indian scientists have uh, developed these weapons very um, super standard i should say um, because trishul is uh, right around 95 96 itself it was uh, supersonic speed so right now uh, chinese have come with super sonic speed but um, trishul was developed around 1995 into a super sonic uh, weapon uh, we have surface to surface um, surface to air air to air systems that are uh, that that will be a very huge in play so if you look uh, at the whole thing why is china trying to impose its uh, will on others it's a it's a war craft it's called state craft also so first before uh, china uh, tries to impose its will it tries to make friendship with uh, that uh, uh, country's uh, head so in modi and uh, xi jinping have met for 18 times close to in various uh, this thing modi could not get, um, get to know that 
the China has these uh, problems and it wants to occupy something. Definitely China wants to occupy a piece of land. That's uh, a known thing. But why does it want to do it is what people are very jinxed up. So if you uh, take a look, India and China went to war at 1962, uh, where India uh, lost Aksai Chin, right? And then in 1967, they wanted to usurp a little bit of uh, Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim uh, in near Natula Pass, right? So at that time, uh, Indian forces uh, were very quick and uh, they repelled the uh, attack. So India won that war, 1967. India won war against China in Nathula Pass. So what really happened there, right? So uh, Chinese incursion, this is our uh, porous borders, right? Like this. So the Chinese incursion happened like this. So the uh, Indian army went a little bit over China, a uh, little bit over the border. Uh, occupied the heights and then it hit on the Chinese uh, backbone. So the people who were already inside the uh, line uh, across the border, they had to flee. So when the army flees, it has uh, its momentum is down. So therefore, um, it, it had to go back. And also the casualties were very high. So Indian soldiers, uh, around 50 people of uh, Indian soldiers uh, died. And uh, Ch in China, Chinese soldiers, there were like 800, 400 is the official figure that people uh, say in YouTube and all those things. But uh, close to 800 people is the unofficial figure. 800 to 900 people died in that Nathila Pass. Uh, Chinese soldiers have died. So that created a huge um, peace zone uh, after that what uh, after the Natula pass uh, war what happened is uh, Chinese agreed not to carry any weapons and India also said that we are not going to carry any weapons and therefore there have not been any weapons or bullets exchanged or anything uh, that's why it's a very peaceful border from 1967 uh, onwards, 1967 to recently 2016 or uh, 2018, uh, where the Doklam has happened. Uh, so this huge span of time, did China, was China peaceful? No. It uh, did war, uh, South Korea, North Korea war, it was there. It invaded uh, Vietnam. It invaded the, uh, a little bit of Taiwan and uh, it's uh, constantly pressurizing the countries that are um, in the South China Sea. So it has uh, captured a lot of islands in the South Asia region, uh, small, small islands. So if you see, uh, if China is like this, right, and India is here, so China built a system of China built a system of uh, naval and uh, other bases around India. And uh, there is a belt road going uh, over the top of uh, LAC. So that belt road is the moot uh, question uh, when it comes to their uh, um, aggressiveness. Now what they uh, did is uh, there is a belt road going from our uh, Aksai Chin, Kashmir, Pakistan, uh, Azad, uh, Azad, uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir and uh, Pakistan like that. So it's very near on both the sides, on the both the sides of this belt road, India is like this. So it has gone, the belt road is going like that, right? So they want to secure that belt road and we don't want that belt road basically. It is going to be very difficult for our uh, troops and uh, in the eventuality of something happens then you are surrounded but india has got uh, a strategic advantage of siachen where we are constantly able to maintain a force so all indian troops um, whether it's bihar regiment rajputana regiment or any other regiment they have a 
uh, stint in the Siachen. So every soldier, uh, I must say, has gone to Siachen and come back. So th this area is well versed for almost all the soldiers. That you can safely say. So why is this important? This is important because when uh, the China is, wants to uh, come into it, the Chinese are not uh, well versed with the uh, surrounding areas of uh, Siachen and others because it's very tough to maintain the uh, bases and they have not that many bases. For India, it is compulsion because we have Pakistan and we have China on the either side. So we had to maintain that. So uh, the other thing is China is very huge. Uh, the, the land mass is very huge for China. So to put all the troops in India-China border will actually expose China into uh, the other enemies that it has like Vietnam, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong. So all of uh, these uh, things and uh, Mongolia on the other side and Russia is on the top of uh, it. So they cannot take out all the troops. And uh, therefore, even though the troops are more, even though China has got a lot of uh, uh, army and uh, tools and weapons, it cannot take all of those tools to the border. That's number one. OK, so when it takes like that, then uh, all of the other uh, regions will go. And Beijing is exactly on the top. So nobody uh, would take out uh, the no, uh, forces near the capital and push it downwards. That's like a very stupid move. And also it, it will expose itself to all the other uh, external forces. So China has always been in the uh, news of uh, nudging its uh, neighbors. There have been few na a few countries that have um, uh, throttled that. Singapore, it's a very small state, but uh, China wanted to dominate Singapore. Uh, but Singapore said uh, Singapore actually expelled a lot of Chinese also. So whoever China sent to Singapore, they made them into their locals and uh, they started uh, saying we don't want to be along with China. So Singapore was, even though it was a very small, it didn't have army, it didn't have any of the military stuff, it is able to uh, avert Chinese uh, influence on it. In fact, Singapore has more influence on China than China having influence on Singapore. The other country that has uh, throttled uh, China is Taiwan. Even though um, Taiwan is uh, considered, uh, Chinese consider Taiwan as part of its own uh, region, uh, Taiwan has always said that it is not uh, going to listen to them. So uh, militarily, Taiwan is nothing compared to China. But still, it is able to um, not, uh, fend off the Chinese aggression. The other uh, country that even though is very small, but able to uh, maintain China is South Korea. South Korea and North Korea were fighting. So China helped uh, North Korea. But still, uh, the, the China and US both helped North Korea. Uh, China and the Soviet Union both helped North Korea. But still, uh, US and other countries uh, intervened and uh, South Korea is able to establish its uh, independence. So there have been very, very, uh, a, a exa uh, very huge examples where the armies were small, the establishments were small, economically weak, but still they were able to win wars. If you go to, um, even in olden days, there have been few uh, victories uh, taken out by very small armies, comparatively. So one such uh, thing was uh, Battle of Marathon, right? In Battle of Marathon, the Greeks only had 10,000 soldiers, whereas uh, Persians uh, were 60,000. They had more tools, they had more people, they had more resources. But still, uh, this uh, 10,000 troop uh, Athenians, Greeks, were able to fend, not only fend off, uh, not only stop the aggression, but also drive them away. 
so why uh, how how can they uh, do it uh, how is a small a, a small army able to take out a big army H how is this possible so what did uh, the athenians do is they when they were small they just uh, divided their forces into multiple things whereas the middle and the flank right so the middle went to uh, to this big force and this big force started to occupy this middle right you see this one then these three uh, the the flanks they started attacking from the outside so from the inside from the inside the attack happened from the outside attack happened so from all the sides instead of the big army uh, capturing all these things the big army could only capture the middle and the other uh, flanks you see these two are flanks right they were able to capture they were able to come out of uh, the uh, circle of death uh, zone of death and then they were able to create the push so when a big army is attacked from uh, multiple sides there will be a push within itself right each person wants to run away and uh, then there will be a lot of commotion and things will uh, go astray so that's how they won so uh, obviously they uh, as i told you china has a lot of military tactics so we cannot use the same tactics that someone else has used but what uh, is important to note is number one china cannot bring all the troops to the border india can for india delhi and kashmir are very close so india can bring all the troops from the south and put it in the himalayan uh, region whereas china cannot do it so that is a big uh, advantage india has so the number two advantage is for any country to invade another country you need double the force but if you see the deployments of china have not been that much they they're not even uh, close to how much we have so what it means is it just wants to nudge the country into some kind of uh, economic uh, uh, depression and uh, uh, so, uh, and military uh, subjugation so that uh, it can have more uh, say in uh, these uh, economic uh, activities uh, mainly the silk road as well as the sea road but in that there is a uh, two things uh, militarily we are uh, in a upper hand with respect to china with respect to the line of control we we don't want to go out of the line of control we don't want to occupy china but if china wants to occupy then it has to increase the number of troops 10 times which it cannot do even if it does that much then uh, taiwan japan and others will take this as an opportunity and uh, will take off uh, uh, some things and also um, it has nuclear weapons india will not use nuclear weapons and china will not use nuclear weapons so that is out of question uh, from both the sides because both of them are not stupid they know that uh, nuclear force can only be used for energy but not for war uh, it's stupidity uh the whole world will uh, coalesce among uh, the aggressor and it uh, becomes very difficult um no matter how much uh, nuclear weapons you have so the other thing uh, china is going to do is uh, have chemical weapons and biological weapons but they have to come all the way from the strategic locations they have to the border and with covid so much of uh, pandemic uh, scare a lot of uh, chinese army will not be in a position will not be motivated to actually attack anything having said that they are very smart so if you look into the videos that uh, are running you would see that the commander is talking uh, to the commander uh, to the equivalent person but whereas the other soldiers are uh, picking out the uh, stones and throwing it away so this is 
this is more like okay um, good cop bad cop kind of thing where the guy is uh, trying to uh, you know have a conversation whereas uh, the other guys are doing things that they like so that is a plan that they have evolved okay uh, it shows that uh, we can uh, do things that are not just command and control so in army you have this command and control where the officer says something and the subordinates follow so they are creating a illusion that we are not in a command control fashion we are independently doing things but in reality that is not the case nobody in china can actually take uh, decisions by their own so even if the general says uh, you know um, i will tell uh, even if the general will be talking nicely but uh, the plan is actually made somewhere else and the soldiers are given strict uh, uh, detailed plan of what they need to do while someone is doing this so this i, I am sure indian army knows about it. so the other thing that uh, indian army needs to get is uh, basically how to win this right so this is not a attacking force this is not a invasion force it's not a force of invasion it cannot have force of invasion so when the attack happens if the attack happens then uh, it has to be drastic it has to be surprise and uh, it has to have the element of uh, destruction uh, written on it and without uh, having a uh, lot of casualties on uh, our side so uh, one good thing army indian army has done is to give freedom to the op, uh, commanders in the operation theater now what i uh, would uh, request all those commanders is to devise your own plan devise your own war strategy devise your own theory and devise your own attack uh, mode so that when this skirmish will happen it will be a skirmish it will not be a full scale war it will be a skirmish and the skirmish when the skirmish has happen you need to quickly gain the upper ground so that upper ground in the sense control on the um, battlefield so as then you will be in a position to um, avert the war if you don't gain control over the battlefield then war will happen because china is going to see it as a opening and it will start pushing so if you don't give any opening and uh, the initial push that happens initial skirmish that happens turns out very uh, disadvantages to them then their motivation will start coming down for these soldiers and once the soldiers are demotivated no matter what you have you are going to lose the war so i suggest all the commanders to first get uh, your uh, army uh, your soldiers highly motivated and the second thing is to demotivate the uh, uh, chinese soldiers right the one uh, the other thing that you could uh, tell is um, in, uh, the government is behind us even if we die but uh, china will not care even if you die so that kind of uh, Uh, propaganda uh, could be used so having said that um hope you enjoyed the um my suggestions or hope you liked my suggestions and uh, until then uh, goodbye and uh, good luck keep watching your world with prakash kapila thank you